Health Ministry discovers four new COVID-19 subclusters. Price control scheme to be imposed throughout MCO third phase. Good evening, thanks for joining us. Blessed Easter weekend to all our Christian viewers. You're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Now, Malaysia recorded 153 new COVID-19 cases as of noon today, bringing the tally of infections in the country to 4,683. Health Director General Datuk Dr. Norhisham Abdullah today said that there are 2,499 active cases where the patients have been isolated and being treated in hospitals. Meanwhile, three more deaths were reported to the Health Ministry's Crisis Preparedness and Response Center, or CPRC, bringing the national COVID-19 death toll to 76. Datuk Dr. Norhisham also said 113 more cases recovered and were discharged from hospitals today. This brings the total number of patients who have made a full recovery from COVID-19 to 2,108. Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia ingin memaklumkan bahawa terdapat 113 kes yang telah pulih dan dibenarkan discharge pada hari ini. Ini menjadikan jumlah kumulatif kes yang telah pulih sepenuhnya daripada jangkitan COVID-19 dan telah discharge pada ward adalah sebanyak 2,108 kes iaitu 45% daripada jumlah keseluruhan kes. Duka cita dimaklumkan bahawa terdapat pertambahan tiga kes kematian berkaitan dengan COVID-19. Justru jumlah kumulatif kes kematian COVID-19 di Malaysia adalah sebanyak 76 kes iaitu bersamaan dengan 1.62% daripada jumlah keseluruhan kes. Datuk Dr. Norhisham also said that 66 COVID-19 patients are currently receiving intensive care treatment and 37 of them required the ventilators. Meanwhile, Datuk Dr. Norhisham said the Health Ministry has detected several new COVID-19 subclusters in several states linked to index patients from the public gathering in the Sri Pataling Mosque. Now, he said the tracing of these subclusters were done with the cooperation of the Malaysian Department of Islamic Development or JAKIM, Masjid Sri Pataling Shura Council, as well as the respective state and health or st uh, the respective state and district health departments. Kementerian Kesihatan telah mengenal pasti senarai terkini madrasah dan tafis bagi membantu pengesanan kontak rapat kepada kes-kes indeks perhimpunan di Seri Petaling. Susulan daripada tindakan proaktif di lampangan oleh Jabatan Kesihatan Negeri dan Pejabat Kesihatan Daerah, beberapa subkluster jangkitan COVID-19 telah dikenal pasti di beberapa buah madrasah dan tafis. The Health Director General then explained that the four new subclusters were discovered in Madrasa in Jiranto Pahang with 62 positive cases in Penanti, Pulau Pinang with six cases, in Sungai Lui, Selangor with 90 cases and in Jasim Melaka with 37 cases. All patients have been isolated and currently being treated in hospitals. Datuk Dr. Norhisham also urged the public not to discriminate against COVID-19 patients and instead cooperate with the government to break the chain of COVID-19 infections. The Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry, or KPDNHEP, will be implementing the maximum price scheme to prevent price hike of essential items throughout the third phase of the Movement Control Order, MCO. Senior Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, in his daily press conference today, said this is to prevent unscrupulous traders from taking advantage of the current situation and raising prices indiscriminately. Jadi seperti, seperti biasalah, biasanya uh, skim kawalan harga dulu jadi sebut skim kawalan harga ataupun skim kawalan harga maksimum ini akan dilaksanakan sewaktu musim perayaan. Tetapi kita telah putuskan tadi tak perlu tunggu musim perayaan, masuk saja PKP 3 ini skim kawalan harga maksimum mesti dilaksanakan dan senarai produk-produk tersebut akan di 
diumumkan oleh KPDN HGP. Ini bagi memastikan tidak ada kenaikan harga barang walaupun PKP ini diteruskan. The senior minister also said that KPD and HEP and the Agriculture and Agrobase Industry Ministry has also informed that supply of perishables and dry goods, rice in particular, was sufficient. As such, he reminded the Rakyat there is no need for panic buying. On another note, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said haircutting services will not automatically be allowed to operate during the Movement Control Order, MCO, as expanded list of businesses must apply to the government first before resuming operations. He also confirmed his cabinet colleague, Datuk Sri Wanjunaidi Tonku Jaffa's remarks yesterday that the new sectors allowed to operate are limited to just green zones in the country. The senior minister added that it would be prudent to wait for a press statement from the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, or MITI, to clear out the details and standard operating procedures of the move. Seperti saya sebutkan semalam bahawa MITI akan meneliti setiap pandangan yang diberikan tersebut. Daripada apa yang kita dimaklumkan oleh MITI bahawa Bukan bermakna otomatik apabila diumumkan, otomatik akan dilaksanakan. Ya. Uh, saya difahamkan ada proses permohonan dan tidak mestinya yang memohon akan diterima at ataupun akan ditolak dan sebagainya. Ini adalah keputusan yang akan dibuat oleh uh, MITI. Lebih-lebih lagi, uh, cadangannya adalah di kawasan hijau sahaja bukan di kawasan merah dan sebagainya. Walau mana pun detailnya akan di SOP detail dan sebagainya tentu saja akan dikeluarkan oleh pihak MITI. Setakat hari ini seperti yang saya sebut kerajaan menerima pandangan daripada rakyat dan seperti yang saya sebutkan tadi bahawa MITI akan meneliti dan memperhalusi setiap pandangan yang diberikan oleh rakyat. There are currently only 29 districts that are green zones or districts where there are no reported COVID-19 cases, including just four districts in the whole of Peninsula Malaysia. In Kuala Lumpur, for example, all four districts are red zones, while all districts in the most affected state of Selangor are all red zones, except for the orange zones of Kuala Selangor and Kuala Langat. The bulk of the green zones are in Sabah and Sarawak, with eight districts and 17 districts there, respectively, that have yet to record any COVID-19 cases. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the 1,000 ringgit compound issued to those who breached the Movement Control Order, MCO, will be maintained. He said the government cannot bypass parliament to increase the 1,000 ringgit compound despite views that hit this fine is too low. Pihak polis mempunyai pilihan sama ada nak memberikan compound ataupun untuk membawa kes ini ke mahkamah. Ha, jadi kalau kes ini dibawa ke mahkamah, maka saya dah sebutkan semalam bahawa hukuman penjara dan sebagainya boleh ditentukan oleh mahkamah. Today, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said a total of 2,156 compounds have been issued. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri then reiterated his previous remarks that certain cases did not only involve instances of breaching the MCO, but involved offences under the penal code such as obstruction of civil servants' duties. The senior minister also said that yesterday, the authority had carried out 783 roadblocks nationwide yesterday, with 435,361 vehicles inspected, while authorities had carried out 48,123 spot checks nationwide, with 6,158 premises inspected. The police had yesterday arrested 1,220 individuals for breaching the MCO, namely 854 individuals who were issued the 1,000 ringgit compound, 345 who were remanded and 21 who were put on police bail. Malaysians stranded in Algeria and Tunisia who wish to return home need to contact the Malaysian embassies in both countries before 10 a.m. this Tuesday. Now, the embassies are currently updating their list of passengers for a special A330 flight operated by Air Asia. 
The Embassy of Malaysia in Algiers in a statement said priorities will be given to Malaysians stranded in the two countries. It also said that those who wish to stay there are allowed to do so. The embassy also informed that it has no new plans for another repatriation mission after this. Malaysians who arrive home will be required to undergo mandatory health screening and 14-day quarantine before being allowed to return to their homes. Three months community service for lying about travel history. Now, Air Asia is one of the few airlines in the world that has chosen to retain all its staff, although it will be having reduced salaries amid a difficult time for the aviation industry globally due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Its founder, Tan Sri Tony Fernandez, who is CEO of Air Asia Group, also urged the low-cost carrier's customers to accept credit for replacement flights instead of, a, uh, instead of pressing for refunds. Tanshree Fernandez candidly shared that Air Asia is possibly facing its biggest challenge now due to costs that it still has to pay without income coming in. He said that the airline company has no revenue coming in as 96% of their fleet is grounded and they still have significant ongoing financial commitments such as fuel suppliers and leasing agents. He added that the airline is doing everything possible to reduce costs to enable it to come back fighting as soon as possible. Addressing customers, Tansri Fernandez said he was sorry that many customers' travel plans had been affected, explaining that AirAsia, like all airlines, had no choice but to cancel a large number of flights due to government restrictions imposed to contain the spread of COVID-19. He said AirAsia believes the credit offer policy is the best solution now and that it is in line with many operators in the travel industry, besides saying this was in step with AirAsia's focus Focus to go through the difficult period to allow it to fly with the customers again as soon as possible. Sultan Ibrahim Johor Foundation, or YSIJ, has donated 42 sets of ventilators to hospitals in Johor. The donation was presented to Johor State Health Director Dr. Aman Rabu by Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar at the Pasir Pelangi Palace, witnessed by Menteri Besar Datuk Engineer Hasni Muhammad and Johor State Secretary Datuk Azmi Rohani. Sultan Ibrahim said the ventilators donated through Sultan Ibrahim Johor Foundation or YSIJ will be distributed to the public hospitals throughout Johor as seen fit by the State Health Director. His Majesty said he understood that in the current situation, hospitals are very much in need of this equipment for patients and it is not easy to get the equipment, especially during the COVID-19 outbreak. The Johor Sultan added in his official Facebook posting that the Johor Royal Palace worked hard to get the ventilators. Sultan Ibrahim said the donation was the result of collaboration among his friends, philanthropists, the state government and himself to ease the government's burden. Now, a Malaysian who works as a postman for Singapore Post Limited pleaded guilty to concealing his travel history during a COVID-19 health screening. According to the charge sheet, Omar Matkatip, 31, from Kampong Bukit Man Inson, Pendang, had on the 26th of March failed to provide information on his travel history to a health officer. Police contacts say that Omar had been working in Singapore and had left the Island Republic on the 18th of March ahead of the Movement Control Order MCO taking effect in the country. Several days later, Omar had suffered a fever and flu-like symptoms prompting him to visit the Pandang District Health Clinic. He pleaded guilty to the charge in front of Magistrate Siti Nur Hidayah Mohamed Noor. The magistrate offered Omar the choice of three months imprisonment or community service and he opted for the latter. He will be required to report to the Pandang Parole Police from the date of sentencing and will be required to carry out at least three hours of community service daily. It is believed he is the first in Malaysia to face charges of concealing travel information during the MCO. State Deputy Public Prosecutor Fatin Dalila Khalid prosecuted while Omar was represented by Zuria Muhammad Nordin from the National Legal Aid Foundation. The two men were killed while another four, including a three-year-old boy, escaped unscathed in a fire which gutted a temporary home for farm workers in Jalan Kikik, Kampung Pertama in Pulau Pinang early this morning. 
Pulau Pinang Fire and Rescue Department Operations Commander Azrul Khairi Abubakar said the victims were identified as Tay Siu Wing, 65, and Myanmar National Muhammad Yunus Muhammad Yassin, 45. Elaborating further on the matter, Operations Commander Azrul said the body was found in the house while Yunus was pronounced dead at the hospital. Azrul said firefighter teams from the Pry Fire Station were deployed after receiving a distress call at about 4.41 a.m. Reinforcements from Banda Perda Fire Station also assisted in the operation. He said about 90% of the house was engulfed in flames when firefighters arrived at the scene. Another four occupants, an Indonesian woman and three Myanmar nationals, including a three-year-old boy, managed to escape the fire. The firemen managed to contain the fire at about 5.25 a.m. and the operation was concluded at about 8.35 a.m. The cause of the fire is currently under investigation. No, Cheryl Idlan Talaha has denied that he has signed with a new football agency without informing his agent, Abdul Halim Abdul Shukur. The 34 year old who plays for Thai club BG Patum United claimed that the offside sports managing director was informed when he had signed with Thai based agency Pro 24. On Friday, No Sharul, known as Mat Yo, claimed that Abdul Halim has not been returning his calls and messages of late and suddenly disappeared in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Mat Yo does not want to prolong the issue and hopes the matter will be settled amicably. In a statement yesterday, Abdul Halim claimed that another agent was representing Mat Yo when they were about to seal the deal with BG Patum. Abdul Halim said the Thai agent showed him the paperwork, which Mat Yo did not deny, and as a result, the club have not paid him the fees. He added that his lawyer has advised him to not speak to No Sharul, as technically he is not No Sharul's agent. Abdul Halim added that he is disappointed with the Trungano board for the entire issue. He said the Thai agent has lodged a report with the FA of Thailand, adding that he has a license to represent players. Abdul Halim also represented national footballer Sharil Fikri Fauzi when he signed with Thailand's Nakhon Rajasima in 2018. And that's it from us in our top story. Health Ministry discovers four new COVID-19 subclusters linked to public gathering. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay safe. Have a pleasant evening.